اهلا بيك طيب هنكمل ان شاء الله دلوقتي مع دكتوره ريم محمد سلام هي استاذه الكيمياء الحيويه والبيولوجيا الجزيئيه بجامعه الجلاله هتتكلم على الابلكيشنز اوف بايوفورماتكس ان مولكولار نيوتريشن ازاي حضرتك like to thank uh, Dr. Summer for inviting me to this uh, awesome uh, meeting and uh, uh, she told me uh, come and talk about nutrition and bioinformatics of course <laughs> I took a course of introduction to bioinformatics and I taught it but I'm not bioinformatician yani in any main means or shape or form uh, I am a certified clinical nutritionist so I can talk about nutrition um, and I work as a professor in uh, molecular medical biochemistry and molecular biology, and it's an honor to be with you today. Uh, so, uh, as Dr. Mohammed said, uh, the uh, title of the talk is Application of Bioinformatics and Molecular uh, Nutrition. Uh, of course, uh, maybe I don't, uh, I'm not going to go into details that were uh, covered before, like uh, uh, it, it's, it, it has been said that uh, uh, for any uh, uh, bioinformatics research, uh, including the informatic research in uh, uh, nutrition, uh, you need to do it in stages. So uh, the first stage is to collect data, so data generation, and the data generation can be through any of the omics uh, era, uh, as was said by Dr. Mansour. Uh, this is the stage one, uh, genomic data, transcriptomics, any big data, big amount of data, and then you want to uh, manage this data, data management, and then analyze it, in, in order to reach the biological uh, knowledge uh, to be uh, solid and evidence-based. Uh, of course, you know that in order to do that, uh, this is something that human resource dependent and infrastructure dependent. And I guess as was mentioned in the first uh, part of the day, uh, that uh, the uh, network will uh, assure that both the human resources and the infrastructures uh, uh, would be ab available and uh, so this is promising to do uh, this type of uh, things in, in Egypt. Um, as far as nutrition, what is the relation between bioinformatics and uh, nutrition? Well, there is something called individualized or personalized uh, nutrition, just like the personalized or precision medicine, uh, in order to uh, uh, either maintain good health uh, uh, or to predict disease or to prevent diseases or to uh, treat diseases, people are thinking of uh, tailor the diet for the people uh, based on the uh, nutrigenetics and nutrigenomics uh, basis that would say that your genetic profile will determine how you respond to uh, different nutrients. At the same time, diet can affect your gene uh, makeup. Uh, so nutrigenetics and nutrigenomics are becoming important area, of course, of the uh, scientific uh, research. Uh, but um, is it uh, is it evidence-based or is it on strong evidence-based? Well, let's see. Uh, personalized nutrition advice is an area that's still in its infancy. Although it has started like uh, several years ago, but still it's not, that, uh, uh, it's not standing on solid ground yet. Uh, there is a lack of educational resources uh, or guidance for implementation of the outcome of the nutrigenetic research. And by that, I mean that uh, many research is going on uh, many uh, data is coming out of this research and you don't want to jump into conclusion and advise patients or advise subjects uh, to do things that are not yet evidence-based. Uh, we need educational resources, uh, workshops, and you need guidance in order for people to give advices that are really uh, meant to be uh, uh, correct. Uh, and this is, of course, to avoid any misuse of information and to protect the public, you need state-of-the-art uh, researches and you need guidelines or framework uh, in order for the advice to be uh, correct. So uh, is there evidence-based uh, 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 information for that you can give uh, nutritional advice to patients, uh, tailored or precision? Well, as I told you, uh, there are uh, work has been done and uh, one of my favorite uh, article was published in, back in 2015 and whenever I talk about precision medicine, precision uh, nutrition, I need to uh, bring it up. It's by Zivi et al. Uh, and uh, they, they, uh, they actually they created the software in which they have, uh, they introduced the uh, inputs from uh, normal people uh, or uh, 
uh, subset in their uh, study was from diabetic people, but let's say on normal people. Everything uh, related to this, uh, to, to the normal population, uh, is uh, manifested here, for example, the microbiome uh, content of the fecal matter of the normal individual, uh, the blood test analysis, uh, questionnaires, whether it is uh, food frequency questionnaires or sleep uh, uh, sequence questionnaires, sleep uh, uh, manners, uh, and anthropometrics, of course, and food diary, all these information are introduced into their software and then uh, the software will do the data management, data analysis, and uh, this kind of stuff, and will come up with prediction for uh, each person's uh, attitude toward the diet. Because of course, I, uh, one of the uh, one uh, uh, sort of information that is collected, the dietary information. So, uh, for example, it will tell me that uh, if you eat this kind of macronutrients or micronutrients, your body will behave that way and you will have, for example, glycemic response that is different from another person eating exact uh, amount, quantity and quality and isocalorie and everything. So uh, it, uh, by that, you can design the personalized diet uh, in order, for example, they were interested in the diabetes. So in order to uh, prevent hyperglycemia or even to be pre-diabetic, they will design or tailor uh, certain dietary uh, uh, regimen for uh, each person according to uh, this software. Uh, and they found high interpersonal variability in the uh, glucose level uh, uh, between persons. Uh, this is one thing, uh, one concept for the uh, nutrition uh, in relation to bioinformatics. So uh, another thing is uh, it's known that food, whether it's macro or micro nutrients, uh, it's known that it can affect the DNA and it can affect uh, the DNA in a deleterious man manner. So it can uh, result into DNA damage. So uh, we know that there are many uh, micronutrients, uh, uh, the deficiency of which actually will result into damage of the DNA. And these uh, two tables are only uh, uh, not meant to be that I will tell all the information. It's just meant to uh, show you that uh, vitamin C, vitamin E, polyphenols, which are antioxidants, uh, folate, vitamin B2, B6, B6 and B12, and all these micronutrients uh, on the first column, actually they do have a role in genomic stability, and hence the deficiency of which will result into consequences. Uh, they know, uh, this is a, the, the, uh, the first, the first uh, the two tables is only uh, to summarize. Uh, how can I go back? Oh, I'm going forward. Sorry. Okay, so uh, these are examples of the micronutrients that play a role, as I mentioned, in the genomic stability. Uh, uh, this uh, kind of uh, illustration, it will tell you that they know the mechanism of uh, DNA damage when the, these micronutrients are deficient. Uh, I don't uh, need to go all through the, these details, but uh, if you go, just go from the uh, left uh, to the uh, extreme right, maybe from your right to the left, you will find that the deficiency of these um, deficiency of these micronutrients will, uh, will end up by having chromosomal uh, instability or aberrant uh, karyotyping in the shape of the chromosomes. Uh, so um, uh, the question here is, can we define personalized or individualized nutrition requirement to prevent the DNA damage uh, using the genotypic uh, information? Well, the answer is inadequate level of evidence is available thus far. Uh, so we need actually to have a research roadmap in order to study something like this. And I, I want to mention here that in our region, uh, our cultural food, our type of uh, uh, dietary habits, it's totally different than many parts of the world. So maybe it's good to have uh, a, a subset of the research uh, just directed to the, uh, uh, the, the food we eat. Even different parts of Egypt, uh, they eat differently. Uh, so it's, 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 it will be a good idea uh, to have this research map uh, designed. Uh, uh, this uh, 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 illustration here, or uh, it's like a plus a chart, it will tell you that uh, the diet can affect the level of gene expression. And we mentioned that, the nutrigenomics, nutrigenetics uh, uh, concept. 
Uh, and at the end, uh, at the end of the uh, the effects that uh, the, the effects that are uh, all through this slide, at the very bottom, you will find that our health and or our disease status can be affected, but by what we uh, we've consumed in the diet, going through the all the genetic changes that uh, takes place. Uh, another uh, concept that uh, was interesting for me personally, I didn't know about it uh, much before uh, preparation of this talk, is that uh, actually when we eat something uh, plant-based or animal-based, the food itself contains microRNA. Maybe the, the, the specialist here would know what is microRNA, very small pieces of RNA, about 22 nucleotides, that will affect the gene expression, okay? and it is endogenously synthesized in our body. But actually, they, they found that uh, what we eat contains the, uh, contains the microRNA, and actually, this microRNA finds its way uh, through the intestine, so orally, through the intestine to our circulation and to inside our body, uh, our cells, and will affect the gene expression because the specialists here, the experts would know that the microRNA will affect the gene expression by binding to the certain region in messenger RNA and uh, affecting the transcription uh, 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 deregulation it. So, uh, okay, so can I continue? The time is up, so I'll try to be fast. Uh, so it was uh, actually very interesting to me to see that what we eat contains microRNA and this microRNA will find its way to inside our cell and will affect the gene expression. Okay, it doesn't want to tell us. Tell it's done for us. Anyway, I can wrap it up here. Uh, now it's working, okay. Uh, I put a, a, uh, an example of uh, a paper that was published uh, and uh, actually it's uh, uh, why I put because it's, it's only uh, was known in 2012 that uh, di there is dietary source of microRNA. So actually this group of people from China, uh, Zhang et al, they uh, published that uh, they were very excited that they report surprising finding uh, that exogenous plant microRNA are present in our sera, in our tissue, and it will affect uh, the way uh, our genes are expressed. Uh, this was in 2012, okay? Up until now, they are still doing it. It's still a hot area of uh, research. And this article here was published uh, this year. And uh, the title is Looking for Plant MicroRNA in Human Blood Samples, Bioinformatics Evidence and Perspectives. Again, uh, they are still working and they are, they are saying that the science uh, in this area is still also in its infancy or it's still uh, not known uh, yet. Uh, there is dietary microRNA databases and the people who are interested in working, uh, in, in uh, studying the effects of what we eat, the microRNA and what we are eating, uh, spe specifically uh, plant-based, but also the uh, animal-based, can uh, uh, get benefits of such uh, uh, databases that is uh, not only will uh, it help in the study, uh, uh, but it will also uh, suggest and predict pathways in which uh, these microRNAs are uh, involved. Uh, of course, I cannot uh, talk about gut microbiota, and Dr. Ram is here, but anyway, <laughs> Uh, the, uh, uh, what uh, we have in our large intestines is uh, trillions of uh, gut microbiota and they are uh, affecting uh, uh, by the cross talk between what we eat, uh, these microbiota and the metabolites uh, produced by this gut microbiota, mm -hmm. this will affect also uh, uh, gene expression of uh, metabolically, critically important genes in our metabolism. Uh, I don't want to uh, go through all this, but uh, what we eat are affecting actually uh, uh, the, the genetics and the, the gene expression. You are what you eat. It's a, it's a very common uh, saying. Uh, and uh, 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 my final thing, it's about the science of foodomics. I've heard about it before, but uh, not in, um, I didn't read about it in much detail, so I decided to share it with you. Uh, foodomics uh, coming from food because everything now is omics omics as we were saying so uh, a group of uh, you know the genomics the proteomics the metabolomics the transcriptomics everything in relation to food 
so we combined it into genomics, uh, foodomics, I'm sorry, and uh, there are uh, databases available. Actually, it's not that new of a science. Uh, last decades only, from 2001 to 2011, uh, these are the number of citations. You can find that uh, they are in uh, 10 thousands. Uh, number of citations uh, uh, in the period of the 2001, 2011, just talking about uh, the uh, applications or uh, 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 how to apply this uh, science or how to uh, use it in um, uh, research. Uh, the last paper here, I, I think that's it, sir. Um, uh, an interesting thing called Meta Wibble, maybe you can look for it later, and this is uh, my final uh, talk and my final slide, and I'm, uh, thank you for your patience. And it was any questions. Thank you so much, Shukran Gazilan, Dr. Arim, Gaula Dasima Giddan, Fitat Bihotel Rizet, Hanaka Gona.